إن الفقيه هو الفقيه بفعاله ليس الفقيه بنطقه ومقاله وكذا الرئيس هو الرئيس بخلقه ليس الرئيس بقومه ورجاله وكذا الغني هو الغني بحاله ليس الغني بملكه وبماله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ما بعد. Our Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said إنما بعثت لأتمم مكارم الأخلاق. The only reason I have been sent by Allah is to perfect noble manners. To perfect noble manners. The entire message of Islam, the reason why Allah sent us a messenger is to perfect noble manners. In this series, insha'Allah ta'ala, for the next 29 days, including today, we're going to be talking about makarim al-akhlaq, the noble manners, and what it means to be a mu'min, and what manners are recommended and obligated by Allah azza wa jal and by His Messenger. The term akhlaq is the plural of khuluq, and khuluq is from the same verb as khalaqa, which means to create. In fact, the term khalq and khuluq is from the same root because khalq is your outer body and khuluq is your inner characteristic. So your khalq is your outer shape and form, your size, your features, this is khalq. And your khuluq is how your soul has been created. Your mannerisms and the way that you interact with others, this is the khuluq. And our scholars have divided akhlaq into three categories. Our Prophet came to perfect all three of them. The first is akhlaq between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Believing in Allah alone, having your tawakkul in Him, your iman, your ikhlas, your muhabba, your husnadhan of Allah. That is category one, your akhlaq with Allah. And this is discussed by the scholars of theology. Number two is akhlaq with the rest of mankind. Your akhlaq with how you deal with other people. Being patient, being just, forgiving, having a clean heart. And this will be the focus of our talk in these next 30 nights, inshaAllah ta'ala. And number three is akhlaq with yourself. Akhlaq in your own private life. Akhlaq, for example, when you do something, do it well. Make sure you are perfect when you do it. So these are three categories of akhlaq. And our topic will be focused on the second, which is akhlaq when you deal with others of mankind. And every day, inshaAllah ta'ala, we will take a particular khuluq, a particular characteristic. The goal being, by the end of this month, inshaAllah ta'ala, we will have a chart in our minds. We will have a table of contents. What do I need to do to be a better Muslim in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And realize, dear Muslim, that being a Muslim is not just about rituals. It's not just about ibadat. It is also about mu'amalat. In fact, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that it is likely, it is very possible that a person will reach the highest levels of the one who fasts every day and the one who prays tahajjud every day every night simply because of his akhlaq. The akhlaq will trump even sometimes your rituals. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the heaviest matter on the day of judgment in your hasanat, in your scales, will be your akhlaq. The heaviest matter will be akhlaq. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, of the things that causes people to enter Jannah the most is your husn al-khuluq. So do not trivialize having good akhlaq. It will be the heaviest in the scales and it will be a magnificent mechanism to enter Jannah. Now the question question arises and this will be the focus of the remainder of today. Are akhlaq in our control or are we born with our akhlaq? Do we control our akhlaq or is it beyond our control? Every parent here of multiple children knows that in fact every child is born with certain types of akhlaq. 
A certain child might be more patient than another. Another of the siblings will be quicker to be angry. Another will be able to bear a heavier pain load. Every child is born different. And this is exactly what we learn from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Once a man converted to Islam, a chieftain by the name of Al-Ashaj ibn al-Qais. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised him and said, O oh, Ashaj, you have two manners that Allah loves. Number one, you control your anger. And number two, you think before you act. Al-Hilmu wal-Anat. We'll talk about this in the rest of the 30 days. Al-Ashaj asked a very intelligent question. He said, Ya Rasulallah, these two manners, did I acquire them with my own skills? Or did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause me to already have them? Is it in my jibilla? Is it already within me? And the Prophet said, no, Allah blessed you to have them. So Al-Ashaj said, Alhamdulillah to the one who gave me two characteristics that Allah and his messenger loves. And in the hadith in the Musnad Imam Ahmad, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that inna Allah ta'ala qasama akhlaqakum kama qasama arzaqakum. Allah has distributed your akhlaq like he has distributed your rizq. Some people are born wealthy. Others are born the children of, of, of kings. Others are born in socioeconomically deprived circumstances. Some people acquire wealth very easily. Others acquire difficult. All of this Allah has a portion. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah has assigned your akhlaq like he has assigned your razaq in the hadith in tirmidhi our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said allah created banu adam ala tabaq ala tabaiq shatta in different levels some of them he said they get angry quickly and they forgive quickly some of them get angry slowly and they forgive slowly some of them get angry quickly and forgive uh, uh, quickly and they forgive slowly and some of them get angry slowly and forgive quickly all four combinations are mentioned and then he said the best are those who get angry slowly and forgive quickly so the point being Allah created created you ala tabaiqa shatta in different categories now if that is the case somebody is going to say well then it's not my fault if Allah created me to be impatient then I'm going to be impatient if Allah created me to have a temp temper to get angry quickly to be able to you know use, use my tongue in a quick manner it's not my fault we say it is true that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a section of your akhlaq at birth it is in our spiritual DNA no question about it however this does not mean that we then remain in status quo no because every single khuluq has a part or a portion that is within our own control as well every single khuluq we also can affect it so we come with our dna in that dna is a level of akhlaq and then in our lives we can change a little bit of that as well and we can change with the help and will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can we change our akhlaq how can we better our akhlaq Four things, memorize them. Number one, we begin with everything, always with knowledge. We begin with ilm. You have to learn what are the akhlaq, what are the categories of akhlaq, what are the blessings of this particular akhlaq, what are the dangers of not having it, what does the Quran and Sunnah say about it. So, number one, we begin with knowledge. And for example, in the Quran, Luqman teaches his son akhlaq. Yes, his son was born with his own DNA. Does it mean you don't learn? Does it mean there's nothing you can change? Luqman teaches his son akhlaq. And that's the purpose of these seminars, inshallah. We're going to be teaching each other akhlaq. Number one is ilm. Number two is you need to have a role model, uswa. You need to see that akhlaq in your life. And we begin with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Your akhlaq, ya Rasulullah, are the highest of all. Our Allah azza wa jal says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ عَسَنَىٰ You have the perfect role model in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So number two, how do we better our akhlaq? We see the akhlaq being implemented in the seerah, in the lives of the righteous, in our own lives. We see those that are better than us and how they have perfected their akhlaq so living examples and examples in the seerah category number two so ilm and then the actual seeing it in in in, in the ta'assi we call it in arabic number three how do we improve our akhlaq number three is our own personal experiences so there's theory and there's practice we go to university we study theory we get to the job we do the practice we do the practicals every one of us has to monitor in our lives 
how we can apply those akhlaq. We learn from our mistakes. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, hadith is in Tirmidhi, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّعَلُّمْ وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمْ That knowledge is gained by seeking it, acquiring it. Knowledge is not gained by osmosis. You don't go to sleep with a book of chemistry, you wake up knowing the knowledge. No, you have to gain it, you have to study it. And hilm, and hilm means to conquer your anger. Hilm is going to be acquired بِالتَّحَلُّمْ which means Bit by bit, you experience anger and you conquer it. You have to be in the experience as well. You have to actually live a life where you have to face anger and then you conquer anger. So, number three is your own lives, your experience. Once you know the theory, once you've seen it done by the experts, by the Prophet wasallam, now you need to apply it in your own life. That is point number three. And you might make a few mistakes. You learn from trial and error. And then number four, beginning and, and all of it, you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You make dua to Allah of the duas of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as reported in the Sahih Imam Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu would make dua to Allah. Allahum mahdini li ahsan al-akhlaqi la yahdi li ahsaniha illa ant. Wasrif anni sayyiaha la yasrif anni sayyiaha illa ant. Oh Allah, guide me to the best of all akhlaq. For none can guide other than you. Notice, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making dua to Allah. Yes, every one of us has a spiritual DNA of akhlaq. Doesn't mean we cannot change it. Doesn't mean we cannot affect it. Once we have what Allah has blessed us with, and we don't have what Allah has chosen, we don't have. Doesn't mean we accept it. Rather, we strive to achieve it. We learn. We see the role models. We practice in our lives. We make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the goal, brothers and sisters. And final point here. And that is, if Allah Azza wa Jal has given somebody a certain khuluq and not given that khuluq to somebody else, this means when the second person masters it, when the second person is able to acquire it, that person will get the higher reward. For example, if Allah created somebody to be very patient, not get angry hastily, then he doesn't get angry. Good for him, he gets the reward. Allah created another person and by nature he gets angry very quickly. But through knowledge, and through seeing the role model, and through experience, and by making lots of dua, he conquers his anger. Even if person A and person B are doing outwardly the same, person B has put in much more effort to get to that level. And so Allah will reward person B much more than he will reward person A. So when you don't have a particular characteristic, well, I and you all have weaknesses. We know our weaknesses. When we strive to perfect those weaknesses and conquer those weaknesses, the rewards will be proportional to the efforts that we put in. And that's the goal of all of this series. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I grant us all the best of all akhlaq and make us the best role models following the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa jazakumullahu khair وكذا الرئيس هو الرئيس بخلقه ليس الرئيس بقومه ورجاله وكذا الغني هو الغني بحاله ليس الغني بملكه وبماله